guys, you're watching our special feature here on CNN IBN. I'm Rina Bhardwaj and over the next 30 minutes, get ready to enter the world of Swarovski as this Austrian brand completes 10 glittering years here in India. So get set to be bedazzled. The mission tonight is to shine like the sun or at least like some of these crystals and what better way than adding the right amount of Swarovski crystals. Now international biggies like Jean-Paul Gaultier have been swearing by its glitter and that's when Swarovski decided to enter India and tie up with our top designers. We can associate with the young upcoming trendy cutting edge designers to existing fashion icons, fashion um, designers who've, who've been around for a very long time and are really brands recognized internationally. For many decades, uh, Swarovski was the only manufacturer in the world for crystal stones. So they really know, they know to cut crystal stone, they know how to polish it, and they know how to make it shine. So Swarovski means fashion, uh, Swarovski means jewelry, Swarovski means shine. Celebrating their 10 Swarovski elements brings together the installations by some of their towering figures of fashion. And here is what inspired them. Inspirations from projects done over the years, from Runway Rocks to the Trend Forum to Unbridled, you know, many, many different shows. So they're trying to encapsulate it along with the fashion element uh, in a night to mark the 10 years. The installations over here, what you see, the, the central theme is basically celebrating the last decade, yet looking into the future. So you will see many installations over here that are futuristic from the context. For example, there's an installation from uh, JJ Valaya that we already did about six years ago. However, this time around, we turn it on its head. Seems to me that life is upside down, actually, at this point in time. No, this is more about, it's a spiritual journey of each one of us, actually. And which is why you see that it emerges from rocks and soil. And eventually, I believe that as time passes and life goes by, the truly enlightened would always sort of, you know, attain a sort, they will go through a spiritual journey. And so we've shown that though we emerge from the soil, you eventually get into a very clear mind and a very pure mind. And crystal sort of, in this case, Orozki crystal is denoting that. Emerging from the soil to a completely trippy affair is the signature of Manish Arora. The brand's current favorite as he shimmers through his psychedelic curtain. Rohit Bal, on the other hand, created something inspired by nature's glory, adding to it his quintessential sparkled decadence. Uh, my installation is called Barish. It's really about, uh, you know, when, uh, when raindrops catch the sparkle, when, when, it's, uh, when the sun kind of just shimmers uh, through it. And it's really about that. It's about movement. It's about uh, the celebration of... Uh, it's really a celebration about uh, everything that sparkles. For me, this is really an ode to a sparkling life. Creating a fairy tale like setting, Gaurav Gupta captures the ethereal spirit of crystal. And it's about these creatures in uh, fantasy forests who are flying on uh, a wisp of wings. And it's almost like a fairy tale like setting where there is, uh, you know, there are creatures which are morphing into deers or cats or birds who are wearing our Swarovski neck pieces. So we wanted a little bit of uh, fantasy flight to the whole installation. That's what it's about. Swarovski had to understand India as a destination, so it quickly tapped the wedding and couture fashion. Whether it was designer Tarun Tahiliani's bridal exposition or the couture weeks, fashion had found a new creative partner in Swarovski elements. Couture in India has uh, many relevances and if you look at the Indian bridal industry, if you think about it, every piece is a couture piece because every piece is unique. It's made for the bride, it's made at, to order for the bride and it's, it's mostly one of a kind. As the first ambassador for Swarovski Elements, JJ Valaya was fully aware of the potential that lay in integrating crystals with bridles. Unbridled was a fantastic initiative by Swarovski and one of the main events happened actually in Paris as well. And what was fascinating was that the usage of crystal, Swarovski crystal all over the world, is mainly for fashion and bridal. So you had a lot of white weddings. So in the middle of it all, you had 
what I had done, which was red. So it was just surrealistic because the entire room was almost white and there was one red outfit. Along with JJ Balaya's red piece, the unbridled became the ultimate showcase of how deep this association of the crystal with the bride the world over has come to be. I've been with them for 10 years. When they first started uh, the India operations, it was actually a very uh, interesting new idea for us because when I used to live in New York before that, I'd actually buy Swarovski stones in New York and import them into India, or actually smuggle them into India. In a sense, there was no access to Swarovski out of India. And then when they finally set up, I thought, oh my God, thank God, we don't have to like, go through the trouble of getting caught at airports. We have Sunit Verma, who has his own couture line, plus, of course, his association with uh, Jude Lieber. Sunit Verma's Swarovski encrusted bags are a popular accessory among Hollywood celebrities. I actually work with a brand called Judith Lieber in America. It's the world's largest and best-known luxury bag company. And so I develop all the bags for all the actresses, Jennifer Lopez, Mariah Carey, Sarah Jessica Parker for Sex and the City, all the shows. Upping the scale of popularity, Swarovski Elements adds that extra punch to Gaurav Gupta's designs of goth and grunge. Our association with Swarovski has been uh, mainly over the past three years. They've kind of sponsored a few of our collections with their elements. And it's been great because we've discovered new sites to ourselves with making costume jewelry and having their galactic shapes of Swarovski used, used in different ways. We kind of do it in a more goth, but more grunge way. And uh, it's, it's just been amazing. We do it in our bridal wear, we do it in our couture and gowns, and we have to, we also do it in our prep because as brooches, etc. Swarovski adds a lot of uh, value actually to our garments as well. Value addition by Swarovski Elements has led Manisha Rora, the enfant terrible of fashion, to discover a new language to his expression of colors and designs. Manisha Rora, who is the creative director of Pakurban, and has been uh, associated with us really since the last 10 years. We have been associating with uh, Manish for his Paris and uh, London Fashion Weeks as well. From hot couture to products, he generously sprinkles them with crystals from Swarovski elements. Borrowing the edgy designs and colors, he has developed the coveted 69 bag for Paco Rabani, encrusted in crystalline fur. The inspirations of their creations are varied owing to their free-thinking design base. The kind of jewellery I do is extremely structural. So for me, this association of, is of coming together something very ethereal, very secretive, very mysterious, with something very strong, very edgy, very masculine, which is mine. Which is almost like, you know, the coming together of two worlds. With Swarovski elements, that's exactly what is made possible. It's made possible by the thousands and thousands of products that you offer. The, nearly 80 odd colors that we offer, many sizes, many cuts that we offer, that, make, that makes it possible even for a creative person to create such unique pieces constantly and consistently over the years. It's time for us to head into a short break, but there's lots more coming up on the other side. <laughs> Lady Gaga's outfit by Tarun Tehliani, to the Crystal Wharton's architecture in Austria, to the Crystal Yogi Swarovski, has touched the lives of artists across the board. It's the world over Swarovski is used in uh, many beautiful ways and it's, it's used architecturally in space design, in, in costume, in jewellery, in, in fashion, in clothes, in, in many aspects.
There is this uh, installation that Stella McCartney did with a horse hanging in the air made out of Swarovskis. So that was really beautiful and it was done in a right kind of almost like a goth space. It was, it was beautiful. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with them. You can do interiors, you can do exteriors, you can do apparel, you can do product, you can do lighting. So the world is the oyster with Swarovski. The crystal goes a long way in bringing in a little shine into the living room space, working as the perfect answer to the Indian penchant for opulence and regality. Taking on many shapes and forms, Swarovski Elements comes up with great gifting options as well. To me, Swarovski crystals are like the modern day interpretation of what this country and its royalty and its whole past was all about. Except at that point in time, they were real jewels, real stones and everything. And now we're looking at a much more modern medium to make it relevant. But if you look at it, our, if you look at our past, it's resplendent with glitter and shimmer. So this is really the journey continuing. It's nothing out of the, it's not off the beaten path. It's actually bang on to what this country is all about. When you give this Swarovski gift, you know it's niche, it's luxury, it's classy, sassy, it's, yeah. Swarovski actually just makes it that much, more, that much more elegant and that much more exciting, and that much more, uh, you know, sensual. And without a doubt, the crystal is here to stay in India. Swarovski is like Xerox. The minute you're thinking photocopy, you think Xerox. You automatically say Xerox. I think Swarovski is like that. The minute you say crystal, anywhere you go in the world, every gully you go into, even in India, they'll say Swarovski crystal hair. This brand, luxury brand from Austria, which today is so much introduced here in India that you don't even talk about the crystal, you say it's a Swarovski. The runway is all set to rock and quite literally as fashion designers are out with their inspirations. So let's just go find out what the fashionistas have to offer. And here on the ramp, the last 10 years of Swarovski elements roll out piece by piece, creating an aura of magic and opulence. The garment of the ramp tonight was one of our couture outfits, which is um, which is in tulle, a gown which is uh, which has chiffon inside, foil chiffon, and it had all these uh, Barosk-like Swarovski elements with mixed with metal elements, and it was uh, it was just couture and fantasy driven. It was amazing. On the runway. What I did was also obviously um, use a lot of crystal, but it was really about uh, very demure. It was uh, the colors were very, very uh, deep tones. It was not. Uh, it wasn't. Very, it wasn't too shiny. It was really again about uh, flight of fantasy. It was about birds. It was about um, being free. It was about celebration of life. It was just about um, a sparkling uh, existence, really. It's a classic JJV um, Trousseau sort of outfit. Um, I was the first brand ambassador of Swarovski, globally actually, but India definitely. Um, and uh, Trousseau has always been one of our key, this thing that we've always used this. So this one is really just a classic statement Trousseau piece. So Nalika Saha is wearing a red uh, crystal Swarovski lenga. Most of these are those in thread work and all over Swarovski. We did a big Swarovski band, which I don't think anyone in India has ever done. So we did the whole entire costume for her and we did the blouse from Swarovski and the veil and also the big jhumka that she was wearing. Swarovski Elements enters the 11th year with greater promise in India and the mentors wish it their best.
our vision really going forward is to be integrated into Indian fashion, into accessories, into whole crystallized lifestyle, like Swarovski elements lifestyle, where we, where you will see um, crystal just in about every scope and sphere of life. Because we'd like to work further with Indian handicrafts, because that's where one area where we see immense potential. We see immense possibilities of adding on value to existing Indian craft forms that are, I think, unique in the world. That's one of the reasons that India is cherished. That's one of the reasons that India is celebrated in the world of fashion, especially. I think as long as there is uh, weddings.